Hey, Don Nesbitt here. Um, uh, just a short blue collar study here. I was going through my Rockman reference Bible on page 1734. Um, I would suppose that's the same number on all Rockman reference Bibles, uh, despite the addition or whatever. I was looking under Roman culture and it was talking about the gladiators in the Colosseum. And it talks about how they used animals. Uh, they had animals fighting. They had the, the gladiators fighting the animals. Uh, and how in one day they had uh, 12,000 animals that were killed and 10,000 gladiators that died. And it is pretty interesting. The word gladiator comes from the Latin word gladius. And you remember how in one of these previous studies I talked about the old Latin, the old Latin Vulgate. Um, where our word rapture comes from. And that was the uh, Bible Believers Bible back uh, just a couple hundred years or even just uh, 150 years, I suppose, after the resurrection. But anyways, the word gladiator comes from the Latin word gladius, meaning sword. The lighter and less dangerous combatants were first on the program the last on the program were the fiercest. Uh, the victors got rich. Paul likens the Christian life to gladiatorial combat um, in which he had to fight. I thought that's interesting. We are like gladiators, some of us. If you're a true Bible-believing Christian that um, you think of your Bible in one context as a sword, like the Bible says it is, and you wield that sword, you use that sword, you are like a gladiator. You really are. Um, and look at this, look at this passage here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 32. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus? What advantage it, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Notice how it talks about he's, Paul says he was fought, fought with beasts. Now, obviously, Paul wasn't in the uh, Colosseum, um, and he was talking about uh, fighting with men. But uh, isn't that interesting that the gladiators had to fight with beasts? amongst fighting with men. That's interesting. Are you Pauline? Are, are you uh, really following Paul? You're going to fight with beasts. You're going to have men give you a hard time. Um, there's another passage back here. Jeremiah uh, 48. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Your sword is your Bible, the sword uh, which is the, the, the sword of, of the Lord, the sword of God, which is the word of the Lord, the book, uh, book of Hebrews, um, comparing the, the sword of God as a two-edged, the book as a two-edged sword, a combat sword, or even a combat knife had two edges to it. That way you could that way you could slash this way, but then you could come back. You normally if you slash like this, now you're vulnerable. But if you have two edges, you can come back and slash the other way as well, as well as stick. Um, and that was your combat sword and the Roman sword was a two-edged sword, um, like the gladiators. A gladiator, a Roman gladiator, would have a two-edged sword, obviously. Um, just some things I just found here that just, I'm like, hmm, look at this. I noticed um, Paul talking in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are the off-scouring of all things unto this day. That's Paul. And he's talking about the best of the best. 
as the Bible believers, as the gladiators, as it were, the spiritual gladiators of his time were reckoned as the filth of the world and off scouring. How long have you been a Bible believer? How long have you been maybe the Christian amongst your friends, amongst the people you went to school with, your family? How long have you been, if, if you're the gladiator, you're probably the one guy, or maybe you're the one woman within that graduating class, within your church perhaps, within your family, that really will take a stand when a stand needs to be made. And you know what you wind up becoming? You're defamed, you're the filth, you're the off-scouring. You really don't get much respect, do you? Maybe you do. Talk to me. You know, if you've really if you've really taken your Bible and you've really taken a stand for what you should have taken a stand for, that's you right there. And maybe this has been your case at work. This has been your case pretty much anywhere you've gone. People just don't, I don't know, they just uh, don't, they, they may put up with you because they have to. But uh, they don't have a lot of respect for you. You know what I'm talking about? You're the off-scouring. You're defamed. You're the filth. And uh, maybe some people spit on the ground when uh, your name is mentioned. Maybe they just, uh, you know, hey, can you just not invite him over for this? I mean, can we just have a little bit of peace that day? You know, he's just going to start something. Amen? You know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then you don't. But I thought this was real interesting. You know, me and Dr. Ruckman, and uh, I'm sure many of you could say, yeah, me and Dr. Ruckman, quote unquote, in your case as well. But me and Dr. Ruckman, I'm telling you, we just, we hit it off on so many levels. And I, I, I think I may have missed this the first time I was reading the notes coming through here. And I'm like, yeah, the gladiator. Doc hit it, Doc hit it out of the ball field once again on so many levels. And uh, if you're a real Bible believing Christian, you take this word and you know when to use it as a sword, as a two edged blade. You're a gladiator, you're a Christian gladiator, as well as other things the scouring, the off scouring the defamed, the, uh, the troublemaker. Are you the troublemaker? Well, I think I've made my point here. Leave me something in the comments. Let me know I'm not alone. Amen? Amen.